Hey there, folks. Welcome. We are uh, getting ready to have an interview with Eric Forner, my mentor. Um, we'll wait for him to um, pop on here and then we'll accept him and get him in. And let's see if we can do that. While you're coming in, if you would go ahead and get... Um, when you get on, if you'll just pop in and say, hey, I'm here. Uh, let me know what state you're from. I always like to know where people are at. I am in Texas. And so, um, there we go. And hey, Eric, how are you, man? Doing well, my friend. How about yourself? I'm doing great. It's an awesome day. Um, I love it, yeah. So, where, are we, where exactly are we calling in from? I'm calling in from Texas. And you're where? California? I'm in Montana. Montana, that's right. Absolutely. Y'all are all over the Absolutely. place. How close to Billings? Yeah, we, are uh, we're. Let me see, Missoula. So we're probably like maybe eight hours, six hours from uh, Billings. Okay. Yeah. So we're uh, we're about uh, 130 miles or so, 140 miles from Kalispell. I don't know if I've ever been in that neck of the woods. <laughs> then we have. And then we have Bozeman or uh, uh, Missoula. Uh, so we're about three hours from Missoula. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah, brother. So it's, I guess it's good. To, it's good to definitely have you on uh, for the first time uh, actually meeting with you live. Um, and so I'm going to give my audience over here a kind of an update and what's going on. So um, basically right now we have one of our students in Passive Income Blueprints. So I'm going to go ahead and let him introduce himself in a minute. But either way, we have him. He's a he's a, a rising star. He uh, uh, he has been with us only a few months now, and he has a, has the abilities abilities to go live. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Mr. Hall. All right, thanks, Eric. Yeah, my name is Russell. Um, as Eric said, I'm part of the Passive Income Blueprints. Um, we actually, I was doing the math the other day, Eric. I just started putting TikToks out about three and a half weeks ago. Um, so we've been going through the course. I took the first couple of weeks that I was on board and uh, really leaned into doing the course and, and getting things understood. And then now it's been all about implementation, implementation, implementation. So um, I get to spend my days, um, you know, doing content creation and answering DMs. of things and uh, I'm just really excited about the people that we're getting to help and I want to thank you for coming on here and letting us interview you and ask you some questions and getting your perspective um, if you guys uh, Kim I see you and Minty Time and others that have joined in if y'all just pop in in the uh, comment section and let us know where you're from we just always like to know where you're from uh, Eric's in Montana I'm in Texas um, and while y'all are doing that I'm going to go ahead Eric if you're ready I'm going to go ahead and get started yeah, absolutely. I just want to commend you on, you know, having your account open only for a few weeks, really, and already accumulating a thousand followers of like minded individuals. I just want to just want to take my hat off to you on that one, because, you know, that's a pretty big feat getting to that thousand followers and moving forward from there. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, we'll take it one step at a time and, and celebrate every single win. hundred <laughs> percent. So, Eric, would you. Um... So we've got somebody that's uh, in Florida. Um, looks like they're moving. Ohio, Ohio, Colorado. All over the place. That's awesome. Kentucky. I don't see any of our overseas folks yet, but uh, they may pop on depending on where whereabouts they're at. So, Eric, would you mind just sharing with us kind of your background and how you got started a little bit? Um, I think your story is so powerful. If if you could kind of give us a nutshell of what that looks like, um, how you got started in, in affiliate marketing. Yeah, absolutely. Let me get a drink of water. I'm kind of long, long winded, but I'll, I'll try not to be. All right. So basically, um, the way I got started in affiliate marketing was like many of you guys out there right now or in the process of going down the rabbit holes as I done. Um, I started with MLM early on, and that's really where I got my start. Right. I was selling to friends and family. But before all of that originated, um, you know, my story, I guess everybody has a story of kind of like where they were, where they're at now, where they want to be. And where I was at one time in my life was a dark place, right? I was, I was an alcoholic. I drank a lot of alcohol. I drank so much that I ended up in prison multiple times because of DUIs. I've always held the job and I always held that dear to me to work hard, you know, pay the bills and make sure I had a roof over my head. And I had what I needed 
based on working a job. I wasn't out there trying to freeload or anything like that, but I had an alcohol problem. Needless to say, um, I've lost many houses along the way. I've, I've broken many relationships and I've destroyed, you know, my relationship with my kids as well based on my absence uh, being, you know, incarcerated. Well, needless to say, um, it was about, I don't know, almost three years ago now, I get out of prison for my last time for my fifth DUI. And uh, I had uh, like a little bit of an epiphany. I knew I, I wanted something different for myself and I did not want to stay in construction. That's what I'd done for most of my life was construction, mining, um, you know, uh, from fiber optics to underground drilling. I've done all kinds of different things inside the, the blue collar work field or, the, you know, the, in that space, in that world. And what came along with the blue collar world of construction and, you know, all of the mining and stuff like that was alcoholism, was a lot of drinking going to the bars when we got off or before we got to work, we were, you know, grabbing a six pack, you know, if we had a two hour drive to the mine, we're grabbing a six pack and we're going to split it between three of us, you know, in the truck. And by the time we get to the mine, we're now we're level headed, right? Now we can actually go to work for the day. So it became a madness and a, and a vicious cycle for a lot of my, a lot, a lot of my life. Right. And so I just wanted you guys to know now um, I, I barely graduated high school. I'm no smarter than anybody else out there. Um, no better than anybody else out there. But what I did was I found a, a, an opportunity online uh, and it started with MLM selling to friends and family. And from there, I basically sold to all of them more than once, more than one product. And basically they bought from me because it was like, a, I feel bad for you and I want to see your success, you know, kind of thing. And I, I seen that, but I felt really salty in my mouth and I felt salty when I was doing it because I wasn't getting any traction. I was just targeting the people I loved. And so needless to say, I went down more rabbit holes and came across high ticket affiliate marketing. And that's kind of like where it all gelled together. Um, I took a course that many of you may have taken uh, or may be looking into currently. I did not uh, invest in the higher ticket product. Um, I invested in a mentor. I paid about $3,500 for four sessions, four one hour sessions. But what I was included in was also was a, a community. All right. Yes, I had four one-on-one -on -one sessions, but my, my mentor guaranteed me success. And he said, basically, if I jumped on one foot, rubbed my belly and patted my head, basically followed whatever steps and direction he said to, to take, right? right. Um, you would have success. And he said, you'll, you'll be making 10K in 30 days. Well, I crushed that and got it in like 20 days. And it was like 19,580. Uh, and then ever since then, I've never made less than 20K per month. And so with that being said, I had no prior skills on uh, online. I was a construction worker. And I never had a TikTok till I was 41 years old. So I'm 40, I'll am 40. i be 43 in March. So that's kind of like my story in a nutshell on a 40,000 foot view, my brother. That's awesome. Yeah, that's one of the things that um, in hearing your story, because, um, you know, I, I got into the program through you um, resonated with me. Right. It's and I, and I talk about this in, a, in some content that I did today is like. You got to find somebody that um, you can trust, that you resonate with. Uh, I've got a recovery background as well. I've been sober for 25 years, and um, my previous life wasn't wasn't all that special, right? Um, and so we're just in a very different place today. Um, anyone can do it, right? It doesn't matter your experience yeah. or background. It's just it's an amazing thing that it really is um, something that anybody can do. Um, so you spe specified high ticket affiliate marketing. Um, why high ticket over other versions of affiliate marketing that might be out there? Well, I believe a lot of the other versions of affiliate marketing in a sense are almost watered down. Um, it comes to a point to where you'll be an affiliate for a lot of different smaller front end products where you're making maybe $10 here up to maybe a hundred, sometimes $200 per commission if you're lucky. So I'm really focusing on something that moves the needle. That's not really not saturated because none of it's saturated. I just don't want to, uh, I guess, involve myself with, with fly by night opportunities, I guess. Right. You know, selling a digital product is, is one thing. Um, or you could basically sell a physical product. Now I sell digital, digital products and learning tools to actually help somebody scale in their life. Now the difference, I guess you could say between low ticket and high ticket is you have to sell a, a, a large amount of low ticket products each month to make a substantial amount of money. Now it can be done, but there's definitely a learning process. Now I'm really focusing on high ticket to where we teach a branding process. So you not only learn how to promote yourself because once you learn how to do that, you can promote any other product there is, but I'm really focusing on something that moves the needle and actually somebody receives a reward at the end 
uh, of, of, you know, of basically the sale process. So that's why I like focusing on that because high ticket is more one-on-one. -on -one. It's more personable with the person. Um, and I feel that for a beginner, uh, it's easier to sell, let's say, three high ticket products to make 10K or, or whatever online a month than it is to sell 300, you know, $10 products per month to make 3K or whatever it comes out to be, right? So you got to kind of like do the math and it's a lot easier, believe it or not, uh, with that being said. Yeah, I mean, that's what makes it so great is that you can have a, a smaller following. Like I've got about 1,800 followers now and um, – it, it really, you, if you're engaged in the right audience, if your content is reaching folks that resonate with you, um, you don't need to be an influencer. You don't have to have millions of followers and views in order to be able to do this. It's, it's, an, it's an amazing thing. It's a real gift. Um, yes. This is, though, really comes to, um, I, I guess, a problem that we see on a regular basis of mindset. Um, you know, it, it's almost like no risk, no reward, high risk, high reward. Um, folks come in, well, I can put my Amazon link out there and I can make a couple of bucks. Um, the mindset shift of going from that to affiliate marketing, how would you speak to that mindset shift? Um, there's cause you, on one mindset, if you're trying to put a product out there, you're trying to shoot for virality, unless it's a product or a service you personally use and you've had transformation in your life and anything over a thousand dollars commission is considered a high ticket product, right? No, this is not legendary marketer at all. Um, but anyway, somebody had a question in there. Um, yeah, but either way, I guess to go back to your, your original question, uh, because I was talking about like legendary marketer and, the, and low ticket, high ticket, but there's a different mindset shift because you're working more personable with one-on-one -on -one with people, right? You're trying to over deliver um, rather than a, a lower ticket product where it, it might help somebody in their life with maybe a, a cell phone, a, a cell phone case. Um, you're you're going to have to get thousands and thousands and thousands of thousands of views. If not, you know, sometimes hundreds of thousands of views on that one video, just to get an ROI, a return on investment. If you, if you didn't invest any money and re reinvestment on your time, because not only you have to either, purchase a lot of products off Amazon to do a lot of reviews, or you have to have one solid product. You can continuously do that review over and over on, and it's going to be hard to find content to fill that space. But if you sell more personable one-on-one -on -one with the approach of like, Hey, I'm going to help somebody overcome a roadblock and it's a high ticket product, then it's more of a relationship then, right? So your followers count again, the mind mindset shift is, Hey, I need to uh, relate with my audience and connect my audience on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Cause I'm looking for long-term sustainability. Now, when you grab a product, like say a target product that say uh, a, it's a tool to help you with your streaming and that product might be hot, but it, you know, it's six months down the line. It might go out of, it might go out of commission or it might go out of, uh, you know, out of business. And now you're dead in the water with that one product that you, thought you knew how to promote. Now you have to search for more in a sense, right? You, you want to learn a duplicable process. So I guess, yeah, in a nutshell, high ticket affiliate marketing is a mindset of actually long-term sustainability. Um, and that's high ticket affiliate marketing. And then low ticket affiliate marketing, it's not for long-term sustainability until you brand yourself with your own product or service. Absolutely. Um, so you're big on mindset though, because there's more to it than that. Um, you, you've, taught several modules in, in both your, your 12 day uh, class and in your masterminds. Um, what else is important about mindset that people need to understand if they're considering getting into affiliate marketing? Well, first and foremost, your mindset is your business from the, the first time you put your feet on the floor, right? So you got to realize that you're stepping in, into something that you've never done before. You're more used to the nine to five or the six to seven or the six to eight or whatever crazy schedule you work out there. Um, I've worked them too. I've worked working 60 plus hours a week doing this, starting it. So you got to take that mindset of punching a clock and following a schedule and a routine every single day to stepping on to the, in the floor that your mindset, you are your business. So if you have a bad text message in the morning and you read it or your boss says, hey, you're going to have to work extra overtime this weekend and that automatically change your mindset from the time you read your text message and you still have to, you know, maybe you still have to apply some, uh, some stuff into your business that morning. You might have to make some videos. You might have to do some market research. Well, if you just had a bad message from your boss about Sunday, when you have to work overtime, uh, then that's going to set your stage for your business throughout that day. So it's going to show in your content. It's going to show in your productivity. So 
what I teach my students is not even to check your phone right in the morning, right? You're not going to look at the thing. You're not going to do anything. You're going to start with your positive affirmations, right? This is for a new business owner. This is for a person that's stepping out of the nine to five environment that's going, that has a routine, stepping into a three hour routine to better your life in six months, you'd be making 20 K online. It's a different mindset shift, but I don't have my students or I don't recommend for my students to check their messages or their text messages or even have a, uh, a, a, an argument in the morning with their spouse or whatever it is, watch the news that something might piss you off. Get, don't, don't do any of that in the morning. Start off with maybe some positive affirmations. I start off with a cold shower, right? Then you go do your workout, maybe read 10 minutes of a book, get your mind prepared for your business. Then you start with your three hours of your work. So you're taking your education or your reading that you just read. You're taking your positive affirmations that you just said in the mirror 10 things that you wrote down you're grateful for, and you're taking that mindset and strategy into your business each morning for your first 15 minutes or 20 minutes or hour, whatever you have, apply it to the strongest ability you possibly have. That's going to set the stage for the day. If you get in that routine each and every day, you start filtering out different things in your life you don't want. Netflix, going, getting coffees, you know, eating out lunch, all these different things are going to start in the morning for a new business owner. So try to start out when you're first starting this business that you, you, you're you going to find failure. You're going to have ups and downs and valleys and, and, and valley despairs. But prepare yourself and understand that. But don't set yourself up for failure right in the morning by checking your phone or having something bad. Try to set yourself up positively moving in the right direction so you can at least have a chance at your stuff at your, at, with your stuff, with your business. And, and I would assume that goals play uh, a key role in this as well, don't they? Yeah. Um, you know, you have to have something that's, that's reachable. It's attainable. Um, your goals, you know, you don't want to be too far fetched, but you want them to be just out of reach enough for you to work harder for right now. A goal could be just as little as improving yourself 1% each day. Now that could be like, okay, I'd never read a book in my life too. I'm going to start reading one page every day for the next week. Then the week after that, I'm going to go to two pages the week after that three pages, or you want to scale it faster, whatever. I'm just using that as an example. But it starts with the little things, right? Educating yourself in smaller increments to move the needle further in life, right? That's pretty much what it boils down to. But the goal setting could start with something little. Is I'm gonna I'm gonna get up today. I'm gonna I'm gonna write down three emails, or I'm gonna read ten pages in a book today, and then tomorrow by next week or whatever next week this time, I'm gonna be reading fifteen pages or one chapter each morning, right? Set yourself up a little bit, one percent each day, and if you look back in one year. Those little goals you set for yourself that might be minute to you right now that I'm talking to you about are going to be moving mountains by the end of that year. And you're going to find yourself working for yourself and retiring your wife or whatever it may be. Right. But start with those small goals. You know, start with a vision board, a vision board or a vision wall. Right. Write these things down. Write the pros and cons down of whatever you're going through in life right now. Like write the pros and cons down of having coffee every morning. Right. If you're trying to save up for a mentorship. Write down the pros and cons. Get yourself mentally prepared on what to look at so you can see the end result. Absolutely. I'm going to do a quick shout out to Kim and to craziness. I see that you're from Wisconsin, um, Ohio. And I think, let's see, Promote Your Passions. John is here. we got some others. Y'all, if y'all will smash up that like button, it'll help push this live out to other people. Um, and if you're getting any kind of... Um, uh, benefit from this. Will you just put the word fire into the comments? Because I, I don't know if you're paying attention, but Eric is <laughs> dropping some nuggets that y'all need to like take note of. So um, we're glad that you're here. Um, Eric, you talked about reading and, and kind of opening up your mind. What is, what's lighting your fire now? What are you reading that is um, uh, maybe we need to read or, or, or really is helping you in your business? Well, right now, what I'm reading right now is about being able to speak to people. Right. Um, be able to get on stage, on the big stage and actually be able to speak to people to move them, uh, to move them with ambition, to overcome the barriers and obstacles in their life. Because everybody out there right now that's watching this is just one fear or one roadblock away from being a millionaire or one fear away from quitting your job and, and living a life you want to live with your family. All it is is one fear, one roadblock. So if I can educate people on what I know and what's, I, what I use over my life by speaking, right? then I could be a million dollar speaker. I can maybe move the public. So right now what I'm working on in my business is learning how to speak to people in large environments to move the needle, right. To basically get them to where I want them to go. So, um, but for anybody starting out, uh, let's see here. I'll give you guys a book or two. Hang on real quick. 
Yeah, well, he's getting those. Like I said, y'all remember to smash up the like button on both sides. Let's push this out to some more folks. And uh, here he is. He's back with some more books. Look at this. Y'all need to take notes. This is going to be fire right here. All right. So if you guys are like new entrepreneurs and you guys are really, you know, trying to wrap your mind around how to plan and how to you know, set goals and, um, you know, how to see something that you've never seen before. Cause if you met, if you close your, imagine, if you close your eyes right now and I had you imagine like your dream house, I, your dream yard, your dream car, your dream, whatever it is, right. Your dream vacation, your dream life, whatever your dream life. Are you able to close your eyes and vividly, vividly, imagine everything I explained down to the, the, the paint color to when you open up the car door, can you smell the interior? That's mm -hmm. the visualization that I want you guys to start to experience. Right. And it's going to all start with something like this, right. Opening your eyes up to like putting positive energies out there, putting and man, like in a sense, manifesting, but putting, putting in work in a sense. Right. So it's called asking it's given. Let me go ahead and flip this real quick. Uh, let's see here. Enhance. Let me see. Flip camera. No, oh, mirror my camera. All right. So it's called Asking is Given. Yeah. Super powerful bit, book to start with. Right. And then in between this book right here, if you guys want to start learning how to set goals that are realistic, attainable and uh, achievable, then if you guys want to improve your life at least one percent each day, it's called The Slide Edge by Jeff Olson. OK. This is going to help you plan for the future. It's going to help you make decisions on the fly that are going to be either good or bad for your future, right? Will this decision today meet my needs over time? Okay. Now, the next one I want you guys to read is called Happy Pocket Full of Money. Oh, yeah. All right. So this one here is going to be a good lead-in from this one here. All right. This is the basics of this right here, Happy Pocket Full of Money. Now, you read this book here. It's gonna. You're gonna have to read it probably three or four times to get the full effect of it. Um, you can listen to it on audiobook or whatever else. Happy pocket full of money will change your life. Now, those are the books that I would start out with as a beginner, um, including uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Yamasaki, which is in the house. And then I'll start there. Okay, that's awesome. Um, once you're got your mindset straight and, and you're you're engaged and you're ready to go, you're you're fully committed. I mean, what are next steps, Eric? What what does the average Joe just do in order to even think about getting started? Well, um, I would say the first thing you need to do before you even start getting started is finding out why you're starting in the first place. Right. Why are you going to take on another task in your life? Why are you going to sacrifice those pleasures in life? You know, uh, going going to the bar with your buddies on the weekend, or going fish, or going whatever it may be. Why are you? What is your why? Why are you going to sacrifice that to put in three hours of this, right? So that your that why right there. Okay, you got to think about why am I doing this in the first place? Why why am I wanting to get out of my job? Why does my boss keep yelling at me? Why do I keep putting up with it? Right? What am I going to do about it? So first, you have to be problem aware. Once you're problem aware, then you have to be solution aware. OK, once you're solution aware, then you can be product aware. So there's a there's a there's a fine line there that we have to help people overcome. And first thing is the realization is, is that you have to re figure out why you're sitting on this live in the first place and why you're listening to me and me, me and Hall here. Why? 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 Why is that even taking place? Now, the second thing is, if you keep that prevalent in your mind, why you're showing up each day, um, then that's going to keep you going. Now, the second thing is, if you keep that prevalent in your mind, why you're showing up each day. Um, then that's going to keep you going. So before you do this, know if, if your why is stronger than your fears, or if it's if it's heavier than your fears, then you'll be all right, right? If there's more weight in your why than your fears, you'll be okay. But just realize as a new entrepreneur, there's going to be struggle and all, that, uh, all those different things, but you have to realize there's a community out there that will help you along the way, right? right. So all of those fears you may have, those those limiting beliefs, you might, you might have all the ambition in the world and want to get started and you're ready right now, but you might have fears that might be keeping you from moving forward. And those fears could be, you know, I don't have a large following. I'm too old. I don't have a social media presence. I'm not tech savvy. I'm not a guru. I can keep going if you want. But either way, once you realize, hey, I do have these fears and you accept those as what they are and you learn how to overcome those, that's when you start seeing success. And then that's when I would say, 
get started, right? Ask questions, right? Mm-hmm. Don't just sit on these lives and just sit there stagnant. If you have something on your mind, there's no question that's stupid. The squeaky wheel get the, will get the grease in our community, right? That's 100%. It. So if you ask the questions and you apply what we teach you every single day, it's a recipe for success. So starting out as a beginner, find out your why, and then and think about that why every single single time you sit down to work on your business. Absolutely. So you heard him. There are no stupid questions. If you have questions, this is a great opportunity. And this is my mentor, Eric Forner with Passive Income Blueprints. Um, he is um, a, a multi six figure earner in the affiliate marketing space, uh, coach, mentor, um, extraordinaire, I would add. He's on fire. But if you've got a question, this is a great time for you to ask a question. Just drop it in the comments on either side and we'll be sure that we get to it. Um, now, Eric, I don't want to spare that drama, but I do think some drama that happened a while back is is poses an important question. So the question <laughs> is, and I'll, I'll let you figure out what the drama is yourself. The question is, why is mentorship or coaching important? Um, OK, so. It, I guess, OK, you got to sit back and ask yourself this. Would I want my my fourth grader, my fifth grader, my sixth grader, even my high school uh student that I'm paying taxes on every year to keep these teachers employed. What I want that, what I want them to go to school and just be given some books um, and some literature and then tell them to go to YouTube. Um, or would you rather have somebody there helping them answer the questions in real time? You know, get through the process, get through those trials you know, with, if a, per, if a kid has a question and he asks the teacher and the questions answered in real time, it's going to keep that kid more involved inside what they're learning, right? There's going to be more involvement, right? There's going to be more accountability. But per se, if you don't have a mentor or a coach or a community, right? Because a community is where you at, you, where you post your question and not three days later, it might get approved and then right. you might get the answer or get spammed. That's not a community. A community is where you post an answer and then within worst case scenario, it's answered, not going to send you to YouTube or Google for you in 24 hours, Right. That's the number one key, I guess, if you could say, would be for mentorship or a community or accountability. Now, on the other side of the spectrum is you don't need a mentor. You don't need coaching. You don't need anybody, right? I'm just a fucking guy. Well, check this out. Either way, you could be just that guy, but you might not have the intellect or you might have been working a construction job for the last 30 years and your brain's not primed because your brain is a muscle, 100%. You don't go to the gym to train your body. You go to the gym to train your mind and your body will follow because it's mental plateaus. You have to push yourself through to break over those barriers. So now if a person's in construction for the last 30 years and they haven't been to school, they haven't read a book, they haven't really learned how to search YouTube and you just told them all you need is this structured uh, material, go to Google, Google and YouTube and you will have success. Well, good luck with that. So I find it really hard to believe that it's better to not have a mentor based on I met, I met plural with 150 people per month for the past year and a half, pretty much every month for the past year and a half. 90% of those people come from cheaper programs. I'm not going to name any names, but they come from a cheaper program that was either $3, $7, 12, 20, up to 50 bucks. And they come to me after investing 50% of them after investing in investing in a cheap program, say I just invested twenty five hundred. I'm a nuclear engineer and I cannot figure out how to you know put my funnel together. There, it's not in the it's not in the material. They're sending me to YouTube. I'm a dentist. I went four, seven years of college and I cannot figure this out. In our community right now, we have dentists, we have lawyers, we have personal trainers, we have bookkeepers, we have everybody you could think of, every walks of life, from military to FBI agents, right? And you can't tell me all them people are freaking idiots. No, it's because the mentorship, the accountability and strategy is not there. Yeah. And if, if it's new, it's new stuff. If you've been playing in the professional world or the blue collar world or construction or whatever the <laughs> case may be, um, uh, the funnel is a foreign thing. I mean, a funnel to an auto mechanic is something you use to change the oil, right? <laughs> it's, it's a yeah. different animal. And so it's OK to ask for and have help. Um, I, I think that it's kind of at least personally, if, if you don't have a coach or a mentor, you're probably not growing. Um, and so one of the things that I look for is for a coach or a mentor that has a coach or a mentor. And we had that with Eric because, you know, I, Eric's continuing to grow. 
Um, and, and he's continuing to invest in us as well as invest in himself. And that to me is just good sound leadership. So thank you for that. Um, hey, no problem, brother. So let me see. Um, I'm looking here just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Do you have any questions on your side that have popped up just yet? We have some stuff over here. It says, thanks for signing me up for the webinar. You're very welcome. Fire. What a great one. What's up, Rory? How are you doing? Should my opt-in page be static with a picture and form or should it include a video? So your opt-in page is just going to be basic, you know, uh, you know, you want to learn how to make X amount of dollars as a beginner, uh, click here. Then it opens up and, it, and you add your, your information, their name and email, right? Well, the next page will be your bridge page. Now it can be static or you can add a video there. A picture would work as well. But if you want to actually move the needle further and connect with your audience a little bit more, Talk a little bit about the offer in between the opt-in page and their sales page. So if you're promoting Legendary Marketer before Dave's video, uh, put a little bridge page there, a video there explaining the offer and how it's benefiting you. And or if you can't, if you don't have any social proof yourself, uh, use uh, uh, proof of your uh, of, of, other, of other people inside your your community, right? Maybe even Dave's proof or whatever. But you want to have that bridge, that gap there, just to be more relatable. Absolutely. Um, this has come up in, in both videos and comments and, and other places. And, and so I'm, I'm curious on, on your take on it. I, I think I know the answer, but I don't want to give it away. Um, do students of yours promote things other than your program? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of people will actually come and migrate from other uh, affiliate companies. Um, and I'll get on to the other types of people that promote or that come into passive income blueprints, but we'll have a lot of people migrate over here. Uh, so for the simple fact of the success we've been having with people not knowing nothing, paying thousands of dollars and then come over here and within a couple of days, they can high ticket sales. But either way um, they come over here from other programs and we have had people still promoting that specific program and actually make high ticket sales. So it doesn't matter what you promote. We teach a duplicatable process. So it's all about connecting with your audience. It's knowing how to do the DM and follow-up process. It's actually knowing how to put words or audio or video on paper or on the internet that sells, right? So, you know, it's, yeah, it's one of those things right there. So it, it truly is just to overcome anybody's fear or uncertainty of this being an MLM or something like that. You're truly creating business people, entrepreneurs, right? 100%. We have a personal coach in here, a personal trainer. Uh, her name's Nina. She has a really large following. She's been a personal trainer since I know her in Boise when I was a personal trainer in 2011, no, 2011, 2021. No, no, 2021. How many years is this? 2023, 2011. So I was a personal trainer in Boise. But anyways, I knew her from then and she's been personal training up till now. And she now wants to put her stuff online, make evergreen content. Then we have bookkeepers as well that have been working on Fiverr for the past couple of years that are bookkeepers that want to take their skills and knowledge up here and actually convert that to evergreen content and teach people in a, you know, maybe a mentorship program or, you know, in a community, a, a mastermind, or just put out videos on QuickBooks on the fundamentals for a, a, a beginner business owner, right? How to set up QuickBooks, how to add bank accounts, that right there, that's value rather than trying to go search YouTube and getting misdirected. You could literally sell that evergreen three video, four video uh, training course for 25, 30 bucks evergreen and sell it to thousands of people that are interested in QuickBooks. So no, it doesn't matter what you promote or sell. Uh, as long as it's ethical, you can, you're selling yourself, you know, that's all you're doing. People buy from people, not from companies, especially in this kind of format. That's why you see Pepsi, Coca-Cola, you see all these other people not getting real actors or getting real creators right here from TikTok promoting their products because it's more relatable, right? It's more personable. They, they connect better. So yeah, the old style of affiliate marketing, trying to sell a, a $2,500 product in a three-part funnel with no follow-up is dead. You, <laughs> Hey, it's dead, right? The new style is here. Yeah, that's for sure. So that, that brings up, I guess the next question is, is about platforms. Um, there's a lot of choices out there uh, that are on a lot of different places doing a lot of different things. Why TikTok? Well, it's, 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 it's a beast in itself. Um, TikTok took everybody for a, uh, for a ride early on before it was, uh, what was that dance? What was it? It was a dance, uh, there's a dance app before this. Somebody comment below and they'll, they'll answer it 
as well. But uh, either it was, uh, anyways, it became TikTok. And once it became TikTok, um, a company, a challenge came out for, for affiliate marketing. And they seen an opportunity to where the virality and the opportunity for normal people to get traction without SEO, search engine optimization, yeah. um, was so prevalent. You could post a video and you'll get a million views uh, in one night and have 20,000 followers and make $10,000 in your affiliate business. That's how it was two years ago when it started. Now, as it starts migrating and getting, you know, I guess not harder, but they're keeping up and keeping above Google. They're keeping above YouTube, as far as putting your content in front of the people that it matters to, right? It's starting to tap into SEO a little bit, but it's the fastest growing platform and most visited platform in the world today, every day for the past year now, probably, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for somewhere where it doesn't matter who you are, if like, if you have screwed up teeth, like I did when I first started, TikTok is socially acceptable for people's deformalities, people's age, race, gender, now, Facebook, in a sense, and Instagram, it's more of that classy boge rolling in my Lamborghini kind of feel, right? <laughs> TikTok is another beast. You could be yourself, who you are on TikTok, and make 20K a month. Yeah. Hands down. The fastest growing platform. I keep spitting a little bit because I do have braces, but I apologize about that. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good. Um so musically, that's what it was. It's called musically. Thank you very much for that. Musically, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I had forgotten. I was, I was, I wasn't around then. I wasn't around. Let's see here. I'm looking here on uh, other questions. Make sure I'm not missing anything. If y'all have anything y'all want to know, please be sure and get it in the chats. Um, all right, Eric. So, so where's the future of affiliate marketing going? It's not going nowhere. Uh, affiliate marketing is going to be here. That, that's what made the internet, in a sense. It's what made and built Amazon, right? So affiliate marketing is not going nowhere, in a sense. Um, low ticket or a high ticket. Now, the digital learning space is going to be, by 2026 to 2025, a $9 billion industry. So there's so many people recognizing that you can actually learn more tools and more value towards actually implementing success in your life or whatever it may be more money without going to college all you have to do really is find somebody that knows how to use the internet right literally legitimately and they don't teach this stuff in school so it's just going to keep growing and multiplying and especially in the coaching uh, space right teaching people knowledge right i'm basically what i do is i sell knowledge that's all i do um i went through the trials and errors and i was in the trenches i found out what worked and what didn't just like you guys are now Starting in your businesses early, you're going through the trenches. Take note on what's working, what's not, so you can build your own program at the end, right? So affiliate marketing is not going nowhere. It's only growing, and it's only it's only getting more abundant. People here in Libby, Montana, I live in a, a town of 2,500 people. Out of two banks I went to, nobody in the bank knew what affiliate marketing was. Oh, wow. Okay. So I, I'm known in this town because of my TikToks, but I'm not really known in my town in a sense, for what I do, in a sense, like they don't understand what I do, like they don't understand how I'm bringing in 100k a month, you know, selling my knowledge online to people that are buying my services and coaching, and they're under they don't understand as well how the people that I'm coaching are making 20k online as well. Like there's money that's flowing through my bank accounts here in Liddy, Montana. They they've never really seen before, right. and so to tell you it on a on a large on a on a, a, a grand grand scheme of things. It is not oversaturated. <laughs> well, that's going to be my question. You know, I, you, you get to ask that all the time. And of course, I don't believe it's oversaturated. But um, depending on the statistics that you look at, you know, you've got anywhere from a nine to a 12 billion um, current market um, going upwards of 18 billion globally for affiliate marketing. Um, and, and what is it? Something like 80,000 companies that have affiliate um uh, capacity they do affiliate marketing yes. uh, if, if not more like there's i don't know i get i get approached a lot of the time not a lot but I put once or twice a week from other companies or other creators asking me how i built my affiliate program right because they're seeing more opportunity with that because it's basically free advertisement it's very lucrative for the person that actually uh that recommends the product because you don't sell nothing as an affiliate 
So it's very lucrative. It's, it's cheaper for the company for ad spend. And then you can get basically one affiliate to put out one piece of content that gets 5,000 views. That's going to attract way more people than ads can ever attract in a sense on a, on a, on a, on a cost point. Right. So they're looking at as affiliates and Hey, if a person relates with my product or service and they have a friend or family or social media following that can relate with that person and that product, then why not allow that person to promote it for free, make it lucrative for everybody inside of this whole operation. And we can just keep the, the momentum going. Right. So that's yeah. definitely the work. Around. Yeah. Nuts. It is nuts. And I'm going to do a quick shout out to uh, Mima. She says she's sorry she's late, but she's glad to be here. Um, Terry, we're glad to have you. Um, so, you know, that brings up something else, Eric, because I don't think th this dawned on me after I started the program. Um, so I'm just I, I have a friend, a, a, an acquaintance through the program that's from Canada. We've got somebody new from Australia. Can you talk about the global nature of this business opportunity for a minute? Yeah, so. Pretty much we're trying to look for anybody or anybody we're giving the opportunity to anybody that has an exchange rate similar to the U S in a sense. Right. Um, and then there's a reason why is because we want to make sure that it's, it's, it's targetable. So if a person say is in say, I don't mean to disrespect with anybody, but it's, it's in other countries, it might be like for our hundred dollar product or $5 product, it might be 75 or a hundred dollars there. So it might not be lucrative for other people in different countries. So I mean, we've opened it up to everybody pretty much on the Western side of Europe. All right. And so anybody with a PayPal or can accept PayPal payments um, or anything like that, then we can get you going inside of passive income blueprints. So there's no limitations. It's just, we're trying to look out for everybody out there and their sake of sanity because you know, them saying I'm posting everybody in my area, but nobody wants to buy it because it's too expensive and it's five dollars or ten dollars or twenty dollars. But either way, we've opened it up to Australia, and I'm thinking about here in the future possibly bringing out like a passive income blueprints Australia because we have so many Australian brothers and sisters out there. Shout out to you guys that are just hungry. They have so much ambition. They have struggle in their lives too, and then we recognize that. So we want to make it lucrative for you guys too in Australia, Canada. Um, stuff like that. Now, if you are like in the UK and the time difference is way off or like China, we still accommodate to you guys because all of our, our recordings are all, it's all recorded. It's all in our masterminds. Everything's there for you for life. But uh, we just understand you can't accommodate to like every, everybody, right? Um, on, especially on a complete different time zone. But other than that, it's opened up for everybody to uh, have part or partake. Yeah, which I just think is fantastic because sometimes we get this tunnel vision and we think that we're just dealing with the market that, OK, you know, I'm in I'm southwest of Houston, Texas, and I'm just dealing with the market that's right around me in that area of some 285,000 people or something. And, and we're really not. We're on a global platform with a global program that can um, you just never know who you're going to reach out and, and, and touch. Right. And I'm just I'm, I'm thinking about Steffi and I'm thinking about Allison and just the success that they're having from other countries and it's just it's fantastic so i didn't want that to go unsaid um so what do you tell the person eric that is struggling with content creation um if you're struggling with content creation find out who you would like to speak to i guess so what is your avatar so what your avatar is I guess it would be a person that's all on the other uh, other end under the mirror. So if you're looking at yourself in the mirror, that would be your avatar. So because you know yourself better than anybody else does, right? So you know about what pain points and struggles you've been through in your current situation, maybe, you know, uh, trying to figure out how to put content out or whatever it may be. You talk about the things that you do currently know. So if, you, if you're not really good at content or the content's not going in that right direction, but you know how to set up your funnel, then talk about your funnel. If you know how to build a TikTok or if you know how to build an Instagram or if you know how to um, do something on Canva, talk about something you know something about on Canva. Start talking about the things you know about that relate to your offer. So if you're sitting there thinking, man, I'm going through all this training, but I'm not figuring out what to post or I don't have any content ideas. Well, go back to your training and go through a couple chapters, or a couple modules, and then go talk about that on a 40,000 foot view on TikTok, right? Go teach somebody something else for free. Now you're not giving everything away 
all at once, but you're, you're inspiring somebody to take action or you're inspiring somebody to follow you because you may know a little bit more about Canva and how it can help them in their affiliate marketing business. So don't limit yourself and think you don't know anything because you knew the process it took to set up your back office or you knew the process it took to start a YouTube channel or you knew the process it took to even start your TikTok account or whatever it is, right? So really think about your avatar and what you know as a person. Write down everything you know up to this point about affiliate marketing, marketing, uh, MLM, uh, you know, Talk about pain points. Talk about what you're do currently doing to get out of your nine to five, to be closer to your family. Talk about the steps you're taking each day, about your schedule, you know, what you're going through as an early entrepreneur, a young entrepreneur. What do you go through strategically to show somebody else, this is how you do it. This is what I've done to overcome this obstacle. So don't limit yourself and think you have to, to go and get viral content. You don't have to get viral content. You just have to have relatable content that's duplicatable. What I mean by duplicatable is telling your story, your current, your past, your two in the in, in the future, right? Don't think too far into it. It's not that difficult. If you have an idea, make a TikTok about it. Or if you have an idea, write it down. That's my advice. Okay. Um, using other platforms, is that an important thing to do in affiliate marketing? It is for omnipresence. Now, as a beginner starting out, only focus all of your attention on one offer and one platform starting out. Just focus all your attention on that one platform, getting it built, understand the process. Then you can scale out to maybe another platform where you can start repurposing your content on like make Instagram or Facebook Reels or YouTube Shorts, right? But really hone in, understand the process on one platform, then understand the process on repurposing or taking the watermark off of your content on, say, TikTok, and then learn about becoming omnipresent. So now when Sally, Sally Joe is on TikTok scrolling and she gets tired of TikTok because of some drama, she decides to go to Instagram now and she wants to look for more drama over there. But all of a sudden she came across your post that's inspiring her to move in her life, move in her business. So now Sally Joe's like, wait a minute, I just seen Eric over here on TikTok. Now he's over here on Instagram. What is he saying over here? Right? Man, he's everywhere. So now you become more of an authority figure because you are putting yourself in different places by limiting the time it takes to make multiple multiple pieces of content by removing the watermark off of one and repurposing it. Do you think that um, organic traffic is the only way? No, it's not the only way, but I recommend to anybody that's starting out, especially early in this business, not knowing if your funnel is put together correctly or know if, you're, if your colors <laughs> are congruent for conversion, you want to make sure that your stuff is optimized first with the, op with the offer that's proven to sell and make sure that your messaging is dialed in on that offer. So when you go to put paid ads towards that offer, um, you know it's going to convert and then you're going to get your ROI or your return on investment back and then some, right? Um, it's not, you know, you're not always going to win on ads. It's a, it's a gamble, right? Um, but you can be really, uh, you can be sure on organic. Now, I would recommend starting organic, figure out organic traffic, figure out your messaging, all those things. And if you want to scale past, say, 100K a month, I would say then you jump into paid ads. Truthfully, I've done, I've done like maybe two or three promotions on TikTok. And I was just basically just trying to get more, more eyes on my video. Right. And I wasn't, I was just testing it. It was like, I never got traction and made money off of paid ads. Right. I've just tried it and just spent $20 here and $30 there. So I, up to this point, have still not invested in paid ads and I'm at over hundred K a month. So that's to answer your question. Don't jump, don't, don't confuse yourself or put more on your plate than you should. Well, I think that's just an important fact to be out there. It's it's counter truth to those that are saying, you know, go spend a thousand dollars a month on ads and then you'll get, you know, ten thousand dollars a month in sales. And it's not it's not true. I think they needed to hear that from somebody that had some experience longer than mine in the space. So thank you for that. Um, let's see here. Make sure we're not missing anybody. Uh, do do do. Hey, Robert. Uh, We've got all kinds of folks that have popped in. That's awesome. Y'all be sure and smash up the like button. It pumps this out to other people. I appreciate that. Um, so, Eric, let me ask this. Let me... Um, uh, I'm... <laughs> 
This is a hypothetical. I'm, I'm putting on a character. Okay. All right. Dude, I've been trying so hard. I'm putting out all this content and, and like, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know, man. My, my likes are down. My follows are down. And I'm just not getting anywhere. And, and nobody's buying your product, man. What's going on? What would you say to that person? Well, let's look at how many people you've been actually in contact with, right? You've been putting out content. Let's see if your your TikTok is set up for conversions, right? Let's let's actually look inside of your business. You know, it's not all about putting out content aimlessly throwing darts in the dark. It's all about putting out content that has has some kind of strategy behind it, right? So I would let them know uh, that you're probably spinning your wheels, not knowing if anything's broken before that, right? So. I would tell that person basically to go back from the beginning, look at how their TikTok is looking. Does it optimize? Is it clear on their messaging? Um, you know, can they can they identify what you do within the first seven seconds of being on your TikTok page? You know, uh, are there because there's a lot of things subconsciously that we don't really know about that you know will stop somebody going forward in the buying process or continue to watch your content. Right. So we would start with a TikTok audit, see if your messaging is correct. And then also look at how you're delivering your message inside your TikToks. Is it spammy? Are you are you you're being transparent? Is it you know, is it clickbait? You know, we really got to put the balance in your TikTok content, too. It just can't be one sided all sales. Right. It's got to be value driven, a little controversy, a little inspiration. You know, so there's a lot of things in that question you just had about what should I do? I would start with a TikTok audit, finding out where they're at in their business, in their mindset, how they went through the training, how how much did they complete? You know, are you actually putting it out there with intent? That's what I would ask. Okay. I'm going to take a slightly different twist because I'm trying to get you to an answer without spilling it myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the money's not made in the content. Where's the money made? It's in the list, right? Yeah. The, 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 money, the money's not made in the content. It's really made in the list. It's made in the relationships. Right. Um, it's it's it, it, I guess it could be inside the content. The money can be made, but it's all about how you deliver that message in your content as well. Right. But if you're trying to collect leads, and you're trying to make this for long term sustainability. The money is in the list. It's in your following. It's in who are relating with you on a one on one basis. Right. It's not like having 10,000 followers on TikTok and only 75 of them actually in, in, uh, engage with your content. That's right. That's unbalanced. We want 500 followers on your TikTok with 500 followers engaging, right? So the numbers or the, the money's in the list in a sense. The money's inside of your community, inside of your your hub. Yeah. And I think that's so important because at least, you know, um, this is not my first program. It is going to be my last because it's working and I'm excited about the results that are coming from it. And I'm just stoked to be here. But in, in previous renditions and attempts, um, I was taught that, you know, really it's just all about content and, and that's very, uh, low ticket affiliate marketing oriented. You just put something on the page and then somebody clicks your link and they make a purchase. Um, this is, this is more relational than that, right? You're going to talk to people in DMs. You're going to talk to people in emails. You're going to talk to people on calls sometimes, right? On zoom calls and those kinds of things. Um, so there's, uh, it's a, it's a different animal than just putting up a link for somebody to go buy a scrunchie. Yes, 100%. Uh, it's a different animal because you got to think about if you're doing high ticket affiliate marketing, you're selling a product to somebody that's over $1,000 and they're probably investing in that to have a transformation in their life, right? And when you take the equation of being, have a human, con like human contact of some sort in, out of that and you're just directing them to just uh, a document and then sending them to YouTube, it takes, you know, it, it takes it all away, I guess you could say. It, it's different, right? It's a different beast because you need to become personal with the person that is, you know, possibly investing their savings or whatever, whatever it may be. You want to make sure that they're on the right foot and that they're getting the right amount of help. And if they're not, then there's obviously a community to come back to for support. Yeah. Um, so there's this myth out there, Eric, that this is a get rich quick scheme that, you know, you just, you, you join your program, you do a couple of things and click, and then all of a sudden the money is just rolling in like it's raining on, on a Sunday, right? Um, the truth of the matter is that's not the case, is it? No. If you could find that get, get rich quick scheme, I want to find, I've been looking since I started, right? It's not out there. 
Um, and no matter wh which way you look at this business online, it doesn't matter what it is. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Now, yes, you could scale to five figures in, in 90 days. Yes, you can. But you have to take a mindset as I want a long term sustainable business. I'm, I don't want a fly by night business. So I'm not going to put fly by night content out there in a sense. Right. I want to put it something out there that matters. So you have to come in with that mindset and know that, hey, it may take me six months to make my five figures or, hey, it may take me a year, but you're building it up for long term sustainability. Now, when you're doing that yourself and you're getting and you're building relationships with people, you start removing yourself from writing the coattails of other companies and you start branding yourself because a lot of people that will put that clickbait material out there will do that clickbait material. But if that company were ever to fall or go away, then they're still stuck at ground zero with finding another offer, trying to figure out the clickbait process rather than starting it from the beginning, promoting that offer, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is. It is. It's a high ticket product. Just try to, Connect with your audience, find out where they're at mentally, where they're at, you know, emotionally. And that's going to help you become a better person in your business for the long run. Yeah, I, I appreciate that because, you know, we do have some some superstars that hit right out of the shoot um, really early on, you know, um, and we celebrate their successes. And we've got other folks that it's taken them weeks or months to get their stride. Right. And but they do get their stride. Um, yes. If you were going to offer a reasonable expectation to somebody that was looking to start today, what would you tell them? Um, well, I guarantee success. So if you started today and you followed our 90 day to 10 K plan, um, it's been proven and proven over again, I guarantee success. Uh, so you will make five figures in 90 days based on your performance inside the group and all that stuff. Right. But I can't guarantee you showing up and putting a hundred percent effort in. So I don't like to put a guarantee out there. Right. Cause I know what we have works, but what I like to tell you guys out there, if you can have your funnel up within a week and you start and you follow our process within a week, there's no, there's no reason in the world why you could not have a high ticket commission in your back office. That's proven fact. Right. So, but I would look at a month, Give yourself a month until you get acclimated to you start seeing maybe a high ticket sale or something like that. But within a few weeks, you could probably see your thousand followers within a couple of weeks, two to three, um, if not sooner. Um, and yeah, but it all scales up from there. Everybody's different. You know, like with Ryder coming in, she scaled to 40K in her business faster than I did. Right. I got into 40K in my business in like five months. She got there in like four. Right. By just using my our strategies, we just taught it to her. She implemented 100 percent and she took off. So to answer your question, it could happen in a week. It could happen in six months. But. Yeah, um, we have the 90 day to 10 K plan, so we have many people that followed it and hit the success. Absolutely. And I think that's important. I, I think, you know, to combat the get rich quick scheme, we've got to um, we want to have a. Uh, as you said, a goal that seems unattainable, just barely out of reach, but we know it's proven that it'll actually get there if you'll just follow the instruction, right? 100%. Uh, well, we're nearing the end of our time. Eric, what question did I didn't, uh, what question did I not ask you that um, you want to give an answer to, or what would you want to say to the community that's gathered with us on this live um, that's either some in, at any different point in their affiliate marketing journey? Um, I would just say real quick, real quick. Um, I would just say, I didn't, you didn't leave anything out. I don't think there's anything left out that I won't be said in the 21st, um, having a live webinar, but, or anything like that. But I just want to let everybody out there knowing that is thinking about starting any kind of side hustle. It doesn't matter what it is with us or somebody else. It's typically not the program's fault a hundred percent. Um, but just follow it a hundred percent, right? Follow it a hundred percent and prove them wrong that it doesn't work, right? Put in a hundred percent effort. Um, and then just all those limited, limited beliefs that you may have, just look around TikTok and then ask yourself if they're having limited beliefs, like what, you know, what are the, what's their why, you know? So just don't limit yourself and whatever. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but just don't limit yourself and just know that anything's possible for sure. Um, you know, follow Russell, uh, definitely follow me on his page. Anybody that's on my TikTok right now, follow Russell. He has all the information. If you guys want to book a call, go to Russell and book a call with our team to see if we're going to be a good fit. If we can help you scale your current business, if we can help you scale past 10K, 20K a month, or if we could just basically help you get started, go to Russell's uh, TikTok, 
Go book a call with our team. I highly recommend it be worth at least looking into. Now, when you book a call, be on the lookout for emails and text messages as that's going to be value and your next action steps in this process, right? Um, so other than that, guys, I'm going live in Barb McGowan's group here in a, in a little bit. Um, so that's and all we'll I have see, to say, Russell. And we'll see you on the Mastermind tonight, right? Yes, I'll be there tonight. I'll, I'll show up tonight. All right. Thank you so much, Eric. Um, thank you all for being here. And yes, I'll be there tonight. I'll, I'll show up tonight. All right. Thank you so much, Eric. Um, thank you all for being here and um, be sure and, and click like and click follow and we will see you on the flip side. All right, guys, you guys have a blessed day. Thank you very much, Russell.